President Obama has done everything he can to get in the way of American energy for whatever reason. America's incredible energy potential remains untapped. It's totally self-inflicted. It's a wound, and it's a wound that we have to heal. Under my presidency, we'll accomplish a complete American energy independence. Complete. Complete. The presumptive Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump in North Dakota at a rally recently calling on the federal government to get out of the way of the energy industry as rising costs in energy become a very real economic challenge for millions of families across our nation following what amounts to the Obama administration's war against fossil fuels. To talk about this more, we welcome in one of the leading experts on energy policy in our country, Kathleen Hartnett-White, the director of the Armstrong Center for Energy and the Environment at the Texas Public Policy Institute and co-author of the brand new book, Fueling Freedom, Exposing the Mad War on Energy. Kathleen, we really thank you for your time tonight here on Newsmax Prime. Just how bad has it gotten under the Obama administration? Well, um, for an example, on the energy and environment front, one entire industry has been almost killed, and, and, and I'm thinking of the coal industry, um, very much as a result of the most stringent, overreaching rules I've ever observed in EPA's 30, 40 year history. And you mentioned coal specifically. You know, it's very interesting as we're seeing some footage of the miners head down one of the coal shafts in coal country. Last month, Hillary Clinton on the campaign trail echoed the whole Obama philosophy. Let's take a listen to Hillary Clinton talking about coal. I'm the only candidate which has a policy about how to bring economic opportunity using clean renewable energy as the key into coal country because we're going to put a lot of coal miners and coal companies out of business. And of course, that was toxic for her politically in West Virginia. And yet there is this preoccupation on the left, whether it was uh, Mr. Obama in 2008 and 2012 or Hillary Clinton more recently to talk about punishing traditional American sources of energy. Now, that that is selling to someone, Kathleen. But do you believe the American people are now waking up? when they take a look at energy prices and the depressed economic situation in which we find ourselves? I think they are. And um, I think of states which have been blessed to enjoy the benefits of the very, very recent um, unprecedented revolution in shale, oil and natural gas. Um, the, the place of Donald Trump's um, energy speech in Williston, North Dakota, is, a, is a, a place which has experienced the unbelievable, roaring uh, chapter of economic growth in terms of jobs created, million people becoming millionaires, and now that's somewhat restrained, um, not entirely at all by Obama policies, but by global geopolitics. But in the shale revolution, the United States is now the largest producer of oil and gas ahead of Saudi Arabia and Russia and is poised, is poised to lead the world, as um, Donald Trump said, as the uh, energy dominant nation of the world. Well, let's talk more about some of the myths that are out there that you debunk in your new book. A lot of them concern fossil fuels. Let's talk about the reality of fossil, fossil fuels. Have they in fact diminished the world's sustainability and resilience? Oh, I think nothing, uh, nothing could be more false and, and more mythical. Um, in the last 20 or th 30 years, um, the real pollutants that result from burning fossil fuels have been reduced by enormous magnitude, 70%, 60%, 80%. The aggregate reduction of, of real pollutants that can impact health from the tailpipe of your car been reduced by 90%. We've used our innovative technology and prosperity to, act, to achieve real environmental protection. You have said on another front that climate change is a, quote, moral issue. In the 30 seconds that remain, can you explain what you mean by that? 
I would say, and I would just add one word, I would say climate policies should be a moral issue because all of these policies um, assume, assume much higher uh, energy prices. It wouldn't, it wouldn't affect the, the, the wealthy uh, elites of our country, but who suffers the most when you make energy scarce? When you drive up the price, it's the poor and the, the middle income families. And you can see this already happening in Germany and England where the, uh, they about 10 years ahead of us on this rush to renewables. And you have, according to um, estimates made by their major media, perhaps a million homes who no longer can afford electricity. And they're actually burning wood mm. again, some of which um, come from um, Texas, I know, and little wood pellets that are shipped across the country. Um, um, to be used in homes and even power plants. You know, it's interesting. We talk about so-called green issues and the environment is important, but there's another green, as in the green of uh, our greenbacks, our dollar bills, and it's striking that balance. Obviously, to truly protect the environment, but also to have a thriving economy. And Kathleen Hartnett White, you outline much of this in your new book, Fueling Freedom, Exposing the Mad War on Energy. Thank you for bringing some sanity to the discussion tonight here on Newsmax Prime. Thank you for having me.